Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and we're here to deal with a very serious subject, one of those subjects for which uh, we all understand why government exists in order to deal with uh, issues that affect potentially broadly the public, and in this case, matter of public health. I'm joined by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins, uh, our uh, Director of Operations, Joan McDonald, our Commissioner of Public Health, Dr. Charlita Amler. I have also with us our County Attorney, John Nona, our uh, Commissioner of Emergency Services, John Cullen, and our Commissioner Sheriff for the Department of Public Safety, uh, Tom Gleason, and other members of the executive team are with us here uh, in the audience. Uh, Colin Smith is with us from the members of the Board of Leg uh, a Board of Legislator member, and other members may join us as we have this conversation. Uh, we're here to give you an update, and this won't be the last update, on uh, where we are uh, in dealing with the coronavirus, which is now n goes by the name of COVID-19. So we'll refer to that uh, officially as we go forward. Uh, certainly, this is uh, a worldwide concern. So Westchester County is really a small part of the universe that's been affected by it. But we are tasked through our Department of Health with responding professionally and uh, quickly to deal with uh, those incidents that occur here in Westchester County, as are every other jurisdiction in New York State. Uh, the role of the state health department, the role of the federal CDC are critical in this, but the county health department has a very critical role as well, which Dr. Amler is going to touch on in a second. Uh, as we go through this, it's very important for us to understand that there are, there are two widespread concerns here. The first is the, is the spread of the virus, and the second is the spread of the virus of fear and unnecessary uh, panic that comes around uh, stories that uh, evidence uh, the potential for physical harm. In the first area, I defer to the expertise of Dr. Amler, who will address that issue. Uh, there are some questions that you might have that will involve our uh, public safety department, our emergency services department, may also involve our county attorney and the legal authority by which we quarantine and do some of these things. The second element of this is one that I'm perfectly happy to address, and that is the concern that I have, and I think we all have, that in moments like this, we need to be mature and sober in the way we approach things. We have a democracy, which means everybody has a right to an opinion and to express it. Now, go on social media, go on the internet, uh, exchange all kinds of information. But this is a time for sober realities, where speculation, where projections of things that aren't backed up necessarily by fact, we're going on the internet and I heard this and I saw this, is not only unhelpful, but it can be negative. It can create a climate of fear that isn't warranted. If this situation advances, we will speak clearly as a county government in every single communication that we have. We're not going to hide anything. But by the same token, we're not going to turn this into a circus because we will do more damage to this, this county and this country if we do. I think it's very important for that to be as much a part of the element of the concern here as is the physical concern over the spreading of the virus. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Sholita Amler, who I remind you is by profession a medical doctor, pediatrician, and uh, is uh, well-schooled in this. She has served in, this is her second county that she's actually been commissioner of health in. She has a long uh, experience in dealing with public health crises. Uh, we've been through our measles summer and our, uh, prior to my tenure here, hepatitis C issues. <clears throat> so she's well experienced with this. She has a very professional department to work with it. And I'm going to turn this over to Charlita to go through some of the different issues. And then uh, after we have a chance to see if there are any specific questions, uh, you'll have the chance to interview her one-on-one, -on -one, which is probably the more compelling interview. Uh, and then also uh, uh, Commissioner Sheriff Gleason, Commissioner Cullen, County Attorney Nona, uh, Deputy County Executive Director of Operations. So Dr. Charlita Amler. Dr. Amler. Thank you. So good afternoon. So we want to let you know that we currently have um, travelers that have come back into the county from areas of the world where COVID-19 cases have occurred. These people are not ill, but we still have to monitor them. Uh, anyone who is coming into the country, into the airports who have been sick or are sick, showing symptoms of COVID, are being isolated by the CDC, and to date, no sick people with symptoms of COVID-19 have come into the county. The Westchester County Department of Health is currently monitoring 26 individuals. These individuals are all quarantined. This is a voluntary quarantine, most in their homes. Um, uh, generally, people don't understand the difference between the terms quarantine and isolation. 
but isolation is a term that's used when uh, we would keep you in an area when you are sick or showing symptoms of a disease, whereas quarantine means that you may have potentially been exposed to the disease, and so you're being uh, uh, removed from others. Um, so the Westchester County Department of Health, we are following the CDC and the New York State Department of Health guidelines and protocols. Um, we have been closely working with our Bureau of Emergency Services and our county public safety uh, to assist. Uh, they've assisted not only us, but um, this 26 people that we do have currently um, in quarantine. The county is making sure that the individuals have everything they need to maintain their um, separation, their isolation within their homes. So uh, food, medications, whatever they need, we're ensuring that they have these things. We have established a way to uh, do video conferencing with most of the individuals using smartphones. And we are in constant communication. Um, so they have our phone number. They can call us at any time should there be any questions or problems. Um, should they become ill or need to be transported, public safety and emergency services would oversee that and make sure that uh, the right staff with trained staff are being, the right equipment with trained staff is being used. The Department of Emergency Services has sent correspondence to all of the fire and the EMS agencies with the latest guidance from the New York State Department of Health and the CDC on responding to potential novel coronavirus patients. Local first responder agencies have um, they are all responsible for providing training and per personal protective equipment to their own personnel. The Department of our County Department of Emergency Services stands ready to provide any assistance, whether it's training, supplies, or guidance that may be needed to support any preparations. Um, and our, we want to support all of our partners in um, within the county. Uh, the health department has pr uh, contracted with a professional EMS company should should that be needed and stands ready as a backup so people want to know what can they do to keep themselves and their families safe and basically it's the same advice that we would give around influenza or other infectious diseases i always say that if people would just learn to wash their hands i would be out of a job and so Unfortunately, a lot of people really don't know how to wash their hands. And so we tell them, sing happy birthday to yourself twice because you need about 20 seconds of really vigorous rubbing of your hands with soap. Uh, you want to get between the fingers. You want to get on the backs of the hands, um, you know, as good as you can under your nails, and then rinse thoroughly. If you don't have access to soap and water, a hand sanitizing solution, you can get the nice ones now that can go in your pocket keep that with you. Anytime you've shaken a lot of hands, which I know our county executive, he needs probably a gallon of it, uh, but uh, we want to make sure that, you know, anytime you've shaken a lot of hands, you've touched a lot of doorknobs, those kinds of things, that you're using sanitizer, uh, hand sanitizer. This virus, um, although it has the potential to be spread from a cough or a sneeze, it doesn't travel very far. It's kind of a heavy virus. So about six feet is about as far distance um, as it's going to go. So we tell people, you know, if somebody, if you're in a group of people and somebody is coughing, sneezing, keep six foot distance between you and that person. Um, cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. And like standing up here, if I had to cough, how would I do that? Well, uh, luckily I have two elbows and they come in really handy. So you would just want to cough into your elbow, not on your hands. Why not on your hands? Because then I'm going to touch, I'm going to shake somebody's hand. I'm going to touch some surface. I sneeze into my elbow. I'm not likely to infect anybody else with that. Um, the U.S. government has issued a do not travel to China. So um, people should take that into consideration when they are planning trips. And also we advise people to get your flu shot. Uh, why? There's a bunch of reasons. One, uh, the symptoms of coronavirus is a runny nose, cough, sneezing, sore throat, um, fever. C 
sound familiar? Those are all symptoms very similar to what you might have if you have influenza. If you've had your flu shot, then we can kind of hopefully take that out of the picture. And so if you have those symptoms, you don't have to worry, you know, uh, so much about uh, what might be going on. So we really do want people to, and it's not too late, and the health department is still giving free flu shots for the whole month of February in our clinics on Tuesdays and Fridays. So I encourage people to get in and get a flu shot if they haven't already. Um, so I guess at that point, that's pretty much, unless there are questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Emma. So just to recap, <clears throat> there are 26 uh, individuals that are being quarantined here in Westchester County. None of them have taken ill from the disease. They're being observed uh, based on potential exposure to the disease. We have had no fatalities uh, here in the United States. There are 15 active cases in the United States of America. That's a very low number. Uh, as I've said before, I think what, what we're all trying to do is do measured, intelligent response to this. Our professionals in public safety and in the emergency services are, are reviewing those protocols within their world so that where we have interaction between police or any other emergency people, that they are prepared to deal with that uh, in that incidence and so forth. And I think at this stage of the game, the, the practical uh, advice that Dr. Ambler has given us is what we need to do and uh, make sure that we do it, and we do it diligently, and we do it seriously. And then just to end this portion of the conversation where I began it, it's very important for us to be mature and sober in the way we approach this issue. This is serious, but it has not reached a, uh, a, a stage by which undue speculation is warranted. And we encourage everybody to uh, follow the news reports as they come along from reliable news sources, such as The Examiner and News 12 and uh, make sure that uh, your reactions to the information you get are uh, checked and double-checked so that we don't find something that may uh, spin us out in an unreasonable direction. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have this team of professionals uh, to, to make this county government move, and we have professionals at every level that are prepared to help all of us as citizens, and we should trust them, and we should work with them intelligently and effectively. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you have for any of our guests. Uh, who are here. Martin? Yep, for, uh, Dr. Amler, um, is there any um, differences in the symptoms for the coronavirus as opposed to the uh, influenza A or B? No, there's really no way to tell from just symptom history. Uh, but what you want to ask is, have you traveled to China? Or have you traveled to any region of the world where there are evolving cases of this novel coronavirus? And have you been around anyone who has been diagnosed or anyone who came from those areas who have been recently ill? The travel history is very, very important. And certainly for individuals who traveled in that area in the last 14 days and developed symptoms, when they go to the doctor, they want to call in advance and tell them they have a travel history, um, that you know they may have been exposed to the COVID-19, because that way when you arrive at the hospital or your doctor's office, they can be prepared to receive you, they can be in the appropriate PPE, uh, and that way other people will not be unduly exposed. So very important, that's a very important piece of information. At this time, other than China, are there a list of other countries? Absolutely. You can go on to the EU CDC website. I find that one is very easy to use, and they, it lists all of the countries. I think there are 29 locations in the world where there are currently cases. Um, that excludes the Japanese cruise liner that had a large number of cases, uh, but there are 20, 29 uh, locations uh, in the world where uh, cases have occurred. And, and the individuals who are quarantined, did they voluntarily report themselves? So uh, this is how that is working right now. Um, if you have traveled to mainland China or uh, primarily mainland China, and you have uh, and you're flying, your plane would be diverted into one of 12, 11 airports in the United States. JFK and Newark are two of those. At those airports, uh, there are CDC staff that are stationed there, and. Um, they are interviewing people. Anyone sick, of course, would immediately um, be evaluated by CDC, but uh, CDC is asking them a variety of questions. Uh, and then anyone who's had travel history within 14 days would be directed to their local health department. Their name would be provided to the local health department. 
uh, we would be asked then to contact them to verify that travel history, um, make sure they're not ill, and then we will we will observe them for 14 days from their last date of departure from the area of concern. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, well, if you could reiterate again how long each of these 26 people will be in quarantine, if you could also explain to viewers, even though they might be coming up negative right now for the coronavirus, why is it imperative that people with those negative results are still in quarantine for the amount of time that they are? So first, we wouldn't test someone unless they were positive. Uh, I'm positive. Unless they were symptomatic, I'm sorry. We won't test anyone unless they are symptomatic. So people without symptoms wouldn't be tested. Uh, but the, um, the 14 days is the incubation period. So from the time they're exposed, they could have approximately 14 days to develop symptoms. And so that's basically what you're watching for. You're watching to see if people develop symptoms of the disease. And at that point, you would then test them if they did. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I gather we're good. So if you'd like to interview any of our uh, speakers here one-on-one, -on -one, you're welcome to do that. Thank you very much for coming. We will update you on an ongoing basis as there are additional significant substantive things to talk about. Uh, and then in the meantime, uh, you can work through uh, our Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee, if you have specific questions, and then she'll access through Joan McDonald and the rest of our team, the uh, respective professionals that you want to uh, speak to. We are going to try to deal with a certain amount of privacy of the individuals. We think that's appropriate. We don't want uh, individuals to be singled out somehow or people who are in a neighborhood who are really not affected by the fact that somebody is housing in place uh, and, and let that trigger some type of situation. So there is a matter of privacy here. HIPAA laws as well apply. And, uh, and then in addition to that, we will make sure that uh, in, uh, if, if we have something that, that really changes the direction of this, we're not going to uh, be shy to reach out to you, have another press briefing and cover those things. So we appreciate your responsible journalism and thank you for your time. And just a reminder, there have been no cases, no positive cases in New York State today. Very good. Thank you all.